Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I got a really exciting product to show you guys, which is the Zima Blade. So let's get started. Just as I thought when the Zima board could not get any better, they go ahead and develop the Zima blade. Now this thing answers a lot of the problems that the Zima board originally had. And the two biggest upgrade that they did to this is adding a USB-C port for power delivery, USB and display port, and adding slottable RAM. So this way it's no longer soldered onto the board itself and you can actually install the amount of RAM that you want. Now I'm gonna leave all the links in the description down below and it's still currently being crowdfunded so you can still get one of these for $64. Now I would consider this one of the best tools you can have for your home lab. Uh, that's considering because I've been using the Zima board for a better part of the year since I got it for everything in testing, home lab, hardware testing, uh, OS testing, and a bunch of other stuff just using the Zima board itself. Now, if you've seen a lot of videos that I do with operating system testing and stuff, or anything that's related to home lab, um, I actually use this board first. Now I have a better board that I could use this with. Now, as far as the hardware goes, it still retains the PCIe expansion port right on top. In front, you have the USB-C, which also allows for power delivery, and it uses 12 volts, USB, and also display port. Then you have a USB 3, a gigabit ethernet, and a display port output. Now on the opposite side, you have the same thing as the Zima board where you can actually fit in two SATA hard drives. Other than the USB-C that they have now instead of the barrel connector, they also added this sodium slot so you can install your RAM. One of the things that you did not have with the Zima board. Now in the Zima board, you only could buy from two gig, four gig, or eight gig model. And again, they're soldered on so you can't even upgrade or change them. But uh, on this, you could choose whatever you want. It still uses sodium DDR3L. So it's not DDR4 or DDR5, but getting DDR3 RAM is actually relatively cheap. For eight gigs of RAM, you could probably purchase something like this for under $20. Marking this up to $84, if you're gonna buy the RAM yourself. Now the CPU has also been changed to uh, J3455, which is slightly, slightly faster than the Zima board itself. They do have two different models, one with dual core and one with the quad core. The one I was able to test was only the quad core, while the Zima board has the N3450. I believe the N series is one generation newer than the J series CPU, but J series CPU is slightly clocked faster so it does have better performance. It does use slightly a little bit more wattage compared to the six watt that you would use for the Zima board. And this is a 10 watt TDP CPU. So you are using a little bit more power, but you do get about 10% increase in speed for all benchmarks. Now, as far as the benchmarks goes, I'll leave something right over here so you can see the comparison. So it's very, very minimal as far as the difference goes. Again, about 10% and the GPU is slightly clocked a little bit higher as well. So you are getting an extra 50 mega hertz on that so in total this new board is slightly faster but i'm not really concerned with myself as far as speed goes it's good enough to run everything that you need but it is an amazing testing tool for everything that you need as far as uh pcie interface cards like this is a four port gigabit if you needed to have more ethernet ports or you can slot in a 10 gigabit ethernet card now you can play around with graphic cards itself now one of the things that you do have with this compared to the old zima board is that this slot sits slightly higher because of the case and also you do have to remove the front plate just to install the card itself so this one i would fit perfectly in here but you can see it's got a slight slant you can lift it up just so it's perfect and it does have exposed backing so you could fit 16x cards on here and still be able to use it now if i was to put any other card in here say like something with the back plate I won't be able to fit it. It just won't sit in here because the case is slightly too large. As far as the Zima board itself, you can sit it. It's very, very snug. But the problem with the Zima board is that it blocks the display port. As soon as I push this in, it's gonna block that port and you won't have a display out. Now, it's not a problem with the Zima blade itself if you do cover it, but it doesn't have that. You just can't bend this enough to get it to fit into the slot. So you will have to remove the plate. Now this case itself is plastic in construction as far as the uh, top panel and then the sides. The bottom is an entire heat sink. This whole bottom is connected directly to the CPU underneath through a thermal pad. And this whole thing acts as a heat sink. It does cool it off pretty good. I never had any thermal throttling from this. So it does work pretty well. Now there are a couple of attachments that you can get for this, which is one of the coolest things that I like is this NAS case. So you can slide two big three and a half inch drives. This will sit directly on top, kind of like just 
like this and since it has grippy feet you could kind of like move it around and won't slide all over the place you can purchase an additional uh two port sata right over here like this and connect it to the back of the zima blade to connect the hard drives so you can use this for a nas itself and surprisingly enough this is actually really well built for a nas at its cost now a couple of projects that come to mind that i would use this for is one either a nas setup like that or Plex server. This will do wonders for a Plex server because the GPU does support H.264 and H.265 for decoding. So if you have like Plex media, you can use this for a Plex server, including the fact that you can add hard drives to it. Or if you do really need a graphic card, you can actually use the PCIe expansion port. Last but not least, I would actually use this for a retro arcade as well because this is a really good device to play retro games. You can probably support up to PlayStation 2, but probably not PlayStation 3. But PlayStation 2, I would definitely say it would be playable because I was able to play PlayStation 2 using the Zima board. And if this is slightly faster, it should handle it no problem. But when it comes to home lab, uh, the operating system that's built in is called Casa OS, which has Docker in mind. So when you first get this device, you will have an operating system that is built for servers and home labs, which will support Docker right out of the box. Now it doesn't use a GUI interface like a desktop, but it does have a full web GUI. And this web GUI is actually really good. If I haven't had a chance to really review the operating system on my channel, but I've used it before when I got the Zima board. And it's a really good operating system where it has everything laid out for you. The web GUI is very easy to understand. They have their own application store. So if you ever decide to just use this as a home lab and add dockers or install some software or install some server appliances you can test with this with the operating system that it comes with otherwise since this is an intel board you can install other operating systems like windows linux android actually could go on this uh, cpu as well so you do have many options other than just using the castle os which is built on top of debian ultimately other than seeing the zima board on this channel you will be seeing a lot of the zima blade because i'm going to be using this for a lot of projects especially the fact that they gave me a lot of hardware that i could play with so a lot of this stuff that you see other than the graphic card and this five port usb-c they did ship me some hardware for a PCIe expansion, a Wi-Fi card, a 10 gigabit expansion port as well, and a few other things that they have. But knowing how I use the Zima board already, I know I'm gonna be taking full advantage of the Zima blade. And most recently, a couple of weeks ago, I just used the Zima board to uh, flash my Steam Deck to upgrade the hard drive from 512 gigabyte to one terabyte, just using uh, this PCIe expansion card. It's so easy, just slap it on and it detects it. You could do whatever you need. So if you're planning to upgrade your home lab setup, I would definitely check one of these things out. Again, everything will be linked down in the description below. And if you have any questions about this or need specific tests, let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.